We must move on now to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And again, we will start with topical questions. And the first member of, on the list, Mrs Dolores Kelly, has withdrawn her name, so I call Mr Michael Majimsey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, in terms of the long running saga of the provision of residence parking schemes in Inner South Belfast and specifically Strand Millis, the market Sandy Row and Donegal Pass, what progress uh, has been made recently to allow us to give an undertaking to those residence communities about such a provision? Mr. Deputy uh, Speaker, uh, grateful to the member for his, for his question. Uh, and also want to pay tribute for his uh, ongoing interest uh, uh, in this uh, matter, uh, uh, because uh, he has met me, uh, taken the opportunity to meet with me, along with groups, interested groups in the areas around his constituency. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it has not yet been possible to uh, implement a scheme uh, in, in any of the areas. But my hope is uh, that, that we continue to work at that to resolve out, uh, outstanding issues. Uh, and uh, to uh, ensure that uh, a scheme can be brought forward, because I think once established uh, in one area, I think these schemes uh, have the potential uh, to be enacted uh, throughout uh, other areas, and I'm aware of, of other interest uh, in different places that people want to see progress. I'm keen to see progress, uh, and I know that the member is too. Chief, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? And there seems to be some optimism there. But bearing in mind, we began this about 10 years ago when John Speller was a direct rural minister. Uh, uh, road service appeared to have fought a, a very valiant fight uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the provision of these schemes. Conditions in these communities have deteriorated since the advent of Belfast on the move. Uh, parking in these areas is absolutely uh, uh, dire. Uh, critical for these communities, and can we have the, your, the minister's assurance that, bearing in mind the last consultation finished a few weeks ago, uh, that we are now on the cusp of getting provision in this area? Thank you. I am grateful to the member, uh, and, and I accept uh, the frustration that, uh, that he feels about it. It is equally frustrating for me, and, and, and as, as he rightly says, um, it is a period of years uh, way be beyond uh, my tenure. Uh, as Minister, uh, but nonetheless, I, as Minister, am keen uh, to see a scheme, a scheme and schemes advanced, and, uh, 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 and I will reflect again on the current situation in the area, uh, areas that he has referred to, and we will see uh, if progress can be made at the earliest stage. I call Mr William Irwin. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister if you can tell the House the cost to date of the vesting of land for the A5. Can I thank the, 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 the member for his uh, question? And, and again, I think uh, the member in topical questions last time uh, raised the issue of A5, uh, and it uh, clearly remains topical with him. Um, the, the, the answer is largely the same in that, um, uh, yes, there has been uh, approximately £60 million expended on, on, on the AFI project to date. The project is delayed, as the member well knows, for uh, very well rehearsed um, uh, reasons that he has heard and uh, the House has heard and indeed the Executive have heard. Uh, and, uh, um, but uh, in that it is delayed, it is not uh, abandoned, and of course he will know that it is uh, an Executive priority. Mr William Irwin. Can I say to the Minister, I have been speaking to farmers that have lost uh, the use of land and buildings for over a year now. Not only have they not received any compensation, but no one has ever come near them to assess the losses incurred. Uh, can, the minister, uh, does the minister, can I ask the Minister, uh, is this acceptable? And can I ask the Minister when these farmers can expect any payment? Well, I am grateful to the, uh, to the member, and I, and I have to say I, I would want to challenge and would need to challenge, I think, some of the assertions that he's made. Uh, I, I think there, there has been uh, ongoing uh, contact uh, with, with landowners and decisions made and agreed and arrived at as to whether or not um, uh, the landowners themselves would carry out um, um, uh, uh, existing accommodation uh, works in the current situation that we find ourselves. And I am certainly aware that uh, a number of landowners 
um, who had applied for uh, up to the 90% of, of compensation uh, in terms of the F5 scheme and the loss of land had received and have received their compensation. Um, it remains a very fluid situation, in many ways a challenging situation, given the legal and the financial difficulties. We are working our way through it, but I do not accept that, uh, that road service or my department uh, have in any way uh, been unhelpful uh, to uh, uh, resolving issues by mutual agreement with uh, landowners in the current situation. Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the Minister was aware that I had tabled a question before in relation to street lighting um, in residential areas to the rears of properties. Can the Minister tell the House exactly when that policy was changed? That, my, my understanding is that that policy, again, uh, w was changed a number of years ago, uh, and um, certainly it, it predated my time. Uh, and again, it may even have predated the devolution uh, in this place. Um, and I understand the point uh, that he makes, but uh, the policy uh, is, uh, is in place, and currently I have no plans to, to have it reviewed. Uh, I know that a number of re uh, members have, have uh, written to me on the issue particularly of um, new lighting schemes and where um, old lights are being made redundant. Uh, I have sympathy for the position that uh, many people find themselves in, but uh, the policy is such that I am not able to uh, show the flexibility that perhaps um, he would like and certainly I may like too. Call Mr. Trevor Clark for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Given, uh, Minister, you are the Minister of the Department and I am sure have the power to review any policy, would you suggest that it is acceptable where there is upgrade in street lightings currently that people are now left in fear because, now, particularly this time of year, we are going into the winter and the dark, the dark nights, where people who had enjoyed in the past street lighting and I would question maybe the Minister should look in terms of his department because the department official told me that the policy only changed within the last number of months, hence these street lights have been removed. And maybe that this would be better use of money than the £60 million pound that was squandered in terms of the A5. Grateful to the member for his supplementary question. Uh, I, I, again, I have to say that um, I, I, um, it, you simply, uh, as ministers, simply don't conjure up. Uh, and are not allowed to conjure up uh, changes in policy without uh, proper uh, consultation and adhering to um, all of the various uh, Section 75 and, and other equality uh, 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 issues. Um, I, I understand uh, the, the point that he makes, but I do, I, I, and he seemed to make uh, a reference at the end to the FI uh, project again. I remind the member his party is fully supportive at executive level of the FI. Call Mrs. Judith Cochrane. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask um, the Minister, given the, the difficult economic environment in which our businesses are currently operating, um, does he agree that his department has a role in supporting initiatives run by local traders' associations which promote shopping locally? Grateful to the member uh, for her uh, supplementary question, and indeed, uh, yes, I do <coughs> believe that um, as an executive and certainly uh, as someone in charge of a department. Um, that um, uh, all efforts should be made to continue to support uh, the local economy uh, and traders. And, and I think we all know how, how difficult uh, trading uh, um, uh, has been um, in the town centres, in the city centres and in uh, uh, places. And I was in uh, the members' constituency uh, last week in the Ballyhackamore area and, and took the opportunity to speak uh, with traders and to learn at first hand some of the, the problems that they're experiencing. Of course, most of the, the, the concerns uh, remain with the, the high cost of rates, uh, which is uh, a matter for DFP. But nevertheless, uh, I, I do take on board. Uh, and, and what I've tried to do as Minister in respect of parking, uh, the member will know that I didn't implement uh, on street car parking charges and, uh, and indeed have successfully argued um, at executive level for a moratorium on car parking uh, increases until at least 2015. for supplementary. Thank you, and I thank the Minister um, for his answer and, and his support for small businesses. I'm wondering, could the Minister therefore explain the rationale that his department used, which seemingly targeted honest, hardworking um, business owners of the Ballyhackamore Traders Association, when it requested that they remove their Eat Shop Live banners from street furniture? whilst at the same time allowing uh, tattered flags which surely distract from business opportunities to remain on the same lampposts? 
I'm grateful to the member for uh, her supplementary question, but I'm not sure that uh, the Alliance Party are in a particularly strong um, uh, stance to, 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 to criticise anybody given the flags protest and as a result of their decision at Belfast City Hall, uh, the, the problems that emerged from that. So I'm afraid I'm not going to take lectures on, 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 flag, uh, on, on flags uh, from uh, the Alliance Party. I do uh, I have to say to the member that street furniture is, uh, is an issue. There are issues of public safety that have to be adhered to, uh, and the, the member should recognise that. And, you know, whilst uh, some discretion and some flexibility can be arrived at, um, uh, then uh, uh, I, I think we're happy to, to, to facilitate that. What I do say is we ha I felt I had a very productive meeting with the, the, the traders of Ballyhackamore uh, uh, last week. The member wasn't present at that, and I don't know then uh, the readout that she's got uh, on, on that. But nevertheless, uh, I heard it firsthand, the issues that were raised uh, with me, and I was encouraged. And I'm encouraged to see the economic activity in Ballyhackamore. Call Miss Michelle McElveen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the possibility of bringing forward construction of road improvements at the A7 at Dornan's Rock, just outside Sainfield? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for her uh, supplementary question and, and, and how topical this is. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but it's clearly topical in the Dornan's Rock area. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, I have discussed, I think, at um, uh, with members and certainly uh, in response to questions, uh, the possibility of uh, bringing forward uh, a, a, a clutch of schemes, uh, uh, road improvements, would I think, which would I think make a significant um, uh, contribution and give um, uh, a lot of relief to uh, the travelling public in, in key areas. And I think. Uh, the, the scheme that she's uh, mentioned could perhaps fall into that. I've had recent discussions with the Finance Minister. I want to pursue those and, uh, and encourage that um, a line in a budget can be created whereby we can make, uh, bring forward these schemes because sometimes the big schemes, the grandiose schemes, uh, whilst important, um, can encounter difficulties either legal or financial. Uh, and I think on the ground uh, people would be much more impressed by the work of this House, of this Assembly and this Executive if we were able to create uh, road improvements that they could very visibly see were improving their area. Ms. Michelle McElveen for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And, and, and obviously, um, the inclusion of the A7 in um, the October monitoring round would be very helpful. Um, but um, without the specifics around that particular scheme, would he be able to give me any information on the A24 Ballon Hinch bypass? Grateful to the um, we move rather deftly there from, from Dorn's Rock to, uh, to, to Ballon Hinch bypass. And indeed, uh, and Ballon Hinch bypass, I have no difficulty in saying, uh, is a scheme worthy of support. In fact, uh, uh, my own party leader, uh, also a member for the Strangford area, Mike Nesbitt, has been very uh, keen to, uh, to, to promote that scheme. As the member will know, uh, I have met with um, uh, traders and local representatives in Ballinahinch. We understand uh, the, uh, the issues that are uh, uh, prevalent there. Uh, I have to say there are still a, a number of stages to be gone through in terms of um, uh, the technical side of things, as well as leading then ultimately to procurement. So it is very likely that the earliest it would be would be in the new budgetary period. Well, Mr. Sammy Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I welcome the progress on the two road schemes in East Hampton, the A2 and the A8. But there are many people who still are unhappy with the way in which the department is dealing with some of the compensation issues. Could the minister explain to me why his department has allowed documentation which would actually help in deciding compensation levels from the commissioner to be destroyed? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his, um, uh, his question and, and obviously for uh, his support uh, for, for the schemes, both the A2 and the A8. Uh, and I think they, they will substantially improve um, with travelling times and the connectivity that is so necessary. Uh, I, the member has, has raised a particular issue. Um, if, if, he, if he wishes to write to me directly uh, with, with the detail, uh, I, I am happy uh, to give him a full and detailed explanation. 
Order. Uh, I'm afraid that's the time for topical questions is now up, yeah. so we will move on to those oral questions that have been listed for the Minister. And I call Ms Pam Brown, and just members who note that question six has been withdrawn. Thank you, Mr Principal. Deputy Speaker, question number one, please. Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, my officials carried out an inspection on all of the uh, development at, uh, on the 18th of September uh, 2013. Uh, since serving uh, an Article 11 enforcement uh, notice, the developer has made significant progress. Firstly, a CCTV survey of the sewers has been completed within phases uh, 1 to 3, and the results are expected to be with NI Water representatives shortly, confirming that repairs have been made. In addition, the street lighting design has been approved in principle by the Department, and officials are waiting further technical documentation from the developer within uh, the next few weeks to allow uh, adoption of the street lighting to proceed. When all uh, underground services are adopted, a final surface course will be placed, allowing the Black Rock development to be adopted. Officials within uh, my Department are continually working with developers so that developments are brought up to the required standard for adoption. I can advise uh, the member that in the Greater Belfast area, which comprises uh, the Belfast, Carrick Fergus, Castle Ray, Lisburn, Newton Abbey and North Down Council areas, my department has adopted 33 sites during the period the 1st of April 2013 to the 20th of September 2013. Uh, four of them involved Article 11 enforcement works by my department. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his um, answer. Um, I had raised this issue with the Minister back in May, and I appreciate the, the work his department has, has done on this particular case. Uh, a date of early July was estimated for completion of the streets, and yet they do remain unfinished. Can the Minister provide assurances that, uh, to the residents of Black Rock that he will continue to pressure the developer in this matter? To the member for her uh, supplementary uh, question, and, uh, and of course, uh, I do want to say that, that, that I think road service officials have worked hard uh, to, to try and, and progress this, uh, and I'm confident that that will continue to be the case. Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, can I assure the House I haven't moved my abode to Newton Abbey? And my question really is about the effectiveness of inspections in terms of reducing the uh, compensation claims, the millions of pounds that prior to Mr Kennedy's uh, appointment was paid out by that department? Well, I am grateful to the uh, member for his uh, uh, supplementary question. Um, uh, I am afraid to say that uh, where, where, where stuff predates me, I am not um, going to take responsibility for it, uh, and the member will know that. Uh, and, uh, if, but if there are any current issues that he wishes to raise with me, uh, I'm happy to hear from him. I call Mr. Phil Flanagan. Question number two. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I'm aware of the recent media attention suggesting that the Johnson bridges over the east channel of the Erne River, which runs through Inniskillen, have failed a recent European strength test. Uh, I can confirm uh, that there is no such thing uh, as a European strength test, uh, nor is my department aware of the source. Uh, of such a claim. Uh, the Johnson Bridges, like all bridges in Northern Ireland, are subject to a regular programme of inspections every two years. A more detailed inspection is carried out every six years in which structural engineers closely inspect all parts of the structure. The most recent inspection undertaken in July 2012 did not uh, highlight any evidence that uh, would cause concern uh, as to the load-bearing capacity of the bridge. Uh, nor uh, the continued use of the bridges by vehicular traffic. The bridges, which were opened in 1954, will, however, require some minor repair works to ensure their condition is preserved. Officials will continue to monitor all bridges, including the Johnson Bridges, and will work to progress the bridge strengthening programme. Mr. Phil Flanagan for a supplementary. I get the free loss, and I thank the, the Minister for that clarity and for the, the history lesson, which I'm sure we all really enjoyed. Um, but um, I hope that the Minister isn't um, splitting hairs here by taking umbrage with my use of the phrase of a European strength test. So is the Minister in a position to, to clarify that Johnson's Bridge hasn't failed any kind of a test in the last few months? Grateful to the, uh, to the member. I, I, I uh, hope that I had. Um, I uh, outlined to him that um, the Johnson Bridge uh, is not um, 
uh, regarded as being under serious threat or uh, an unsafe structure. And I think that's very good news, and I think it's important news that we, that we convey that message, particularly uh, to people in Enniskillen and County Fermanagh. And of course, um, uh, the, uh, uh, they, they will remain on uh, the ruling list uh, that, we, uh, that we have for uh, uh, repairs. But I am assured that there is no um, unsafe nature uh, to, uh, of the Johnson Bridges that warrants uh, immediate uh, remedial work to them. Uh, the member should bear in mind um, 5,800 bridges uh, are um, what we have to look after in terms of um, uh, my department. Uh, and I'm pleased to, to say that uh, we do that on, on an ongoing basis and uh, work very hard to ensure because safety has to be uh, the paramount concern. Call Mr. Joe Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Prince, Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answer. Can I ask the Minister about a bridge in Newton Stewart that certainly has failed the test and we're waiting on it to be upgraded and refurbished? But can I also welcome the work that has happened by road service on a bridge in Barra, one on Victoria Bridge, and more recently one on Stone Bridge in Mount Jai? Thanks. Well, uh, thank uh, the member for his uh, uh, detailed knowledge of uh, Guide the Bridges in, in uh, West Tyrone and, uh, and other areas. Uh, I'm pleased that, um, that uh, work uh, to uh, secure and uh, maintain bridges uh, um, has been happening. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, if the member has uh, further concerns about any of the bridges that he's mentioned or any others, then he should communicate those uh, to the department as quickly as possible. I call Mr. Tom Elliott. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and, um, getting back to the Johnson Bridge and in a skill to the Minister, uh, he did mention that it is part of a rolling programme of bridge upgrades and maintenance, but can he give us any sort of indication of time scale of when the Johnson Bridge work will be carried out? Well, I am grateful to the, uh, to, uh, to the member for his supplementary uh, question, and, and, and we would expect that within um, certainly a couple of years. Uh, uh, um, uh, my sense is that um, uh, the, the, the road surface uh, and, and the deck uh, waterproofing um, is, is likely to need uh, replacing uh, at some point due to the, and of course the, the bridge does play an important role uh, in the life of Enniskillen. Um, programming of that work of course will be important as to, uh, to carefully manage it so that it, to minimise any disruption on traffic flows. Um, but my uh, information is that the earliest uh, work is sch uh, scheduled to be carried out uh, would be 2014-15 and more likely the year after. Uh, can I just say that uh, by way of, of, of record, um, in January 1999 there were 955 bridges that required uh, strengthening. Um, but because of the ongoing programme of work, the rolling programme that I have referred to, that figure has now been reduced significantly to something like 283. So I think it does indicate that, uh, 800, uh, that having spent £85 million pounds to achieve that, uh, we continue to take these things seriously. Thank you. Mr Mervyn's story is not in its place. So I call Mr Gordon Dunn. Question number four. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, please. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I have been advised by Northern Ireland Water that the first phase of a £3.5 million pound project to, to resolve the sewage uh, uh, pollution at Kinnegar Lagoons is progr uh, progressing well. The, tender, the project is at tender stage and work is expected to commence in spring 14 with a construction period of approximately 12 months. This uh, phase of the project will prevent further pollution to the lagoons. Uh, a second phase will comprise a scientific investigation to determine the best uh, remediation options for the lagoons and particularly the odours emanating uh, from the mud at low tide. Remedial work will be undertaken based on the scientific recommendations. The investigation is underway and it is estimated that the emerging findings will be available in spring 2014. And I call uh, Mr Gordon Dunn for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer. Does the Minister recognise that the ongoing stink and environmental pollution, which has been experienced by particularly Hollywood residents and commuters on the A2 Bangor Dual Carriageway for some what, over 20 years, is 
totally unacceptable, and that the measures that are now proposed will go will give us assurance that this will address the, the, the matter once and for all. Well, I am grateful to the, to, to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and I, and I can well imagine uh, the, the, the frustration and, and the anger felt by uh, a great many, particularly householders uh, and business owners uh, uh, who live uh, close by. Uh, the member will know that uh, this has been uh, an historic uh, problem uh, over many years. I am pleased that uh, the, um, that the scheme that is uh, planned and at an advanced stage uh, will be the first part in seeking to resolve these issues. Um, and, uh, and I think it is important then that uh, as we carry out the works for the wastewater treatment plant um, and, and, uh, and await and assess the scientific report, because it seems to me that is going to be crucial in dealing with the legacy issues of the lagoon. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, I thank the Minister for his response so far. As has been said, this uh, problem has existed for at least 20 years. And uh, I noticed in 2010 the uh, Northern Ireland Environment Agency actually issued a warning letter to the DRD at the time. Can the Minister explain how the project will resolve the issue of odours and indeed prevent pollution of these very important lagoons in the future? I am grateful to the, to, to the member for his uh, supplementary question and, uh, and is welcome for the work that is, that is about to, uh, to commence. Phase one of the, of the, program, of the project will divert uh, the combined uh, sewer overflow discharges to the Kinnegar Works uh, and away from the lagoons. And it will also uh, comprise uh, the construction of a new interceptor sewer uh, and pumping station. And then phase two, it is hoped, uh, will address uh, the odours from uh, the lagoons and undertake remedial work. Um, it's, it is envisaged um, that uh, once both phases are complete, uh, the frequency and severity of, uh, of the odours in the area will be greatly reduced, uh, if not eliminated. And of course, uh, uh, it is right that, that we are cautious enough to say that the, the, the scientific investigations will be key to moving. Uh, progress on phase two of this particular project. I call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, as a member for East Belfast, in close proximity to the area under question. I am aware of the, the seriousness of the issue, and I wanted to ask the Minister if he would be willing to meet with the Mayor of North Down Alliance, Councillor Andrew Muir, who has campaigned on this issue for a number of years, and a cross party delegation of councillors on this important matter for residents and commuters in the area? Well, I am grateful uh, to, to the member for his um, uh, supplementary question and uh, for promoting his, his party colleague, uh, uh, who, uh, with whom I, I have had meetings on, on other issues. I am generally receptive to elected representatives uh, and uh, like to be known as a listening minister. And, and when uh, requests come in, uh, I, I do my level best to try uh, if it is appropriate to, to, to accede to them. So that might encourage you to, to, to speak to your friend. Well, Mr. Jim Wells. Question number five, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Sorry, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The, um, yeah, the, uh, the issue, I think, uh, on uh, the uh, Strangford, uh, I'm I am uh, very conscious uh, as to the, uh, the importance of Strangford as a tourism uh, area, uh, and uh, the member will know that um, uh, the, uh, we are under some pressure uh, to um, uh, make uh, security arrangements, for want of a better uh, title, for those cruise ships which berth uh, uh, in that area. Um, hence, the, uh, at one stage, a planning application had been tendered, uh, had been submitted. I have now taken action to have that planning application withdrawn, uh, and, and I uh, do uh, um, intend to make a special case about arrangements for 
um, uh, that area with uh, the Department for Transport in London, uh, and I have asked to meet uh, the relevant minister to put forward. I think the unique circumstances that we have here, not very many cruise ships um, uh, berth there um, on, and on, uh, on a yearly basis. However, I think that can continue to be developed. And I don't uh, want a situation whereby um, uh, people are, 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 are off put for, for any particular reason. Nonetheless, there are requirements that we have to meet, uh, and we will see where those discussions take us. Mr. Jim Wells for supplementary. I had hoped the Minister was going to say that this project had been entirely shelved. I accept that there has to be special arrangements for, for cruise liners at call, but could the passengers not be shepherded into a nearby building? Rather than building this cage-like structure, which is totally inappropriate not only for the village of Strangford, also for the village of Port of Ferry, just across the Narrows, equally was which was going to have one of these inflicted upon them. It's just simply the wrong facility in the wrong place. Well, I, I, I have to assure the, the member that I'm on the, on the same uh, side of him, and in fact, I've been very proactive to ensure that the, that the current uh, planning application has been withdrawn by my department. Uh, I think either through the use of the existing or uh, the temporary structures or some appropriate structure um, uh, um, that we can resolve this, uh, and that is, it is with that in mind that, that I will approach um, the discussions. Uh, with, with uh, colleagues uh, in London in order to resolve this to the satisfaction, hopefully, of everyone. I call Mr Chris Hazard. I can call you and thank the Minister for his answer thus far. Indeed, I welcome the Minister's withdrawal of um, what it, I would consider an ill-advised planning application at New Quay in Strangford this month, uh, which would have represented you know, uh, depriving local people ongoing access to the lock. But can the Minister now bring forward proposals to develop Newry Quay in Strangford Village, which is owned by DRD, uh, as, a, as a vehicle to service local tourism and indeed perhaps build a, a, you know, a sea-based tidal and wind farms that are being built off the coast? This area could service them indeed. Robert. Okay, the, the, the member has, I think, wandered slightly off the, uh, off the subject, I suppose, to his own advantage. Um, the, uh, but I, I, uh, um, initiatives, uh, further initiatives, um, uh, we will, of course, make ourselves uh, uh, available to meet and discuss with other relevant interested agencies, such as uh, the, the local council and uh, perhaps uh, Northern Ireland Tourist Board or whichever uh, um, government agency or government department uh, wishes to engage with us. Um, but certainly, uh, I, I think there is much work to be done uh, to resolve the current situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, but I, I simply think that by taking the action that I have done to withdraw the planning application, I think um, uh, is a significant signal in terms of my thinking on this issue. We'll move on. Question six has been withdrawn, so I call Mr. Ian McRae. Thank you, Prince Deputy Speaker. Question seven. My officials are, are currently uh, proceeding with uh, making the necessary legislative uh, changes in the form of uh, a new off-street parking order, which will see the tariff in Central Car Park, Markerfield, uh, reduced uh, to 40p uh, for three hours. The proposal is to be advertised in the local uh, Markerfield newspapers on the 30th of September. Uh, today and uh, is uh, an anticipated the new arrangement will be in operation by November 2013. Uh, following a request from uh, Macrofield Council, my officials also visited uh, Rainy Street, uh, Central and Union Road Pen display car parks on the 12th of June 2013 to distribute information leaflets and speak to customers to promote the benefits of using Park Mobile uh, to pay for their parking. The Park Mobile cashless payment system is now available in all my department's pay and display off uh, street car parks and on street uh, charge car parking locations throughout Northern Ireland. Uh, this uh, system provides customers with an alternative method of paying for their parking other than using coins at the pay and display machines. Usage of uh, the Park Mobile system over the whole of Northern Ireland stands at 4% with uh, 35,000 vehicles registered and 128,000 transactions completed since January. Uh, if local councils feel their local economies would benefit from a relaxation of on-street charges in my department's road services, uh, car parks, officials will be happy to engage with them uh, to explore what might be feasible. I would advise uh, the member that officials recently accommodated a request from Newton Abbey for a council to in introduce free car parking in the square car park in Ballyclare on Saturdays during the month of March 
2013 and are presently considering a further request for a similar arrangement to be put in place on Saturdays in December 2013 and January 2014. Ian McRae for a supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I say um, that certainly on this issue, the Minister has been a listening minister, and certainly no doubt the, the um, businesses, indeed the, the residents of Macrofield area, will, will welcome this decision. There is, however, um, a decision was taken to in, introduce from free um, on the central car park to approximately 50 per cent um, pay and display, which has caused on a knock on effect, knock -on effect and onto the local streets nearby, which has caused more difficulties. I have written to the Minister on, this, on the issue, but will the Minister um, consider where the introduction of these charges have been put in place that the obstruction of footpaths are not um, affected for people, whether disabled or indeed um, parents with pushing prams with children? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, uh, uh, and of course uh, we, we, we will take uh, on board uh, uh, those comments, particularly uh, in respect of safety issues. And, uh, uh, and I know that, that the issue of, of car parking and car parking fees can be challenging, and, uh, uh, and, but nevertheless uh, I, I think we have sought uh, to, uh, to strike a reasonable balance because you know, car parking charges uh, are, are necessary to the extent of keeping the movement uh, of, of, uh, uh, of traffic um, and, and ensuring that there is turnover so that the shops can benefit from uh, more regular visits uh, from people who want to, to come into towns like uh, Macrofield. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his action uh, in this regard in, in Macrofelt. And I have met him a couple of times on this issue, so I uh, place on record my thanks to him for that. Um, could the Minister update the House uh, on progress on Park Mobile since it was first piloted in Belfast? Well, I'm grateful to the, to the Member for her positive com comments and indeed uh, the role that she has undertaken uh, um, in terms of uh, bringing forward these issues um, in respect of Macrofelt too. Um, uh, Park Mobile uh, was first piloted uh, in Belfast um, in, in, in 2011. Um, by 2012, usage was at 4%, and by, um, uh, by 2013, that's been more than doubled to 9%. So, um, this is very nearly, uh, it's just shy of, of 1 in 10 of all payments within Belfast are now being made by the Park Mobile uh, system. And again, across Northern Ireland, um, the system was introduced in November of last year. Um, again, in the, uh, the usage uh, indicating around 4%. Um, and I hope very much that that will, uh, and it is anticipated that that will increase uh, over the next 12 months, as has been the case in Belfast. So uh, I think promotion uh, of the system is taking place in towns across Northern Ireland. The public res response from those who have engaged has been positive. And at this early stage, I am pleased with uh, the 1 in 10 usage in Belfast and pleased with 1 in 25 across Northern Ireland. Uh, we will continue to monitor progress and hope uh, that we can further promote it. Thank you. Mr. Patsy. Thank the Minister for his answers thus far. I wonder, could I ask the Minister? Has he any plans to introduce machines in DRD parking facilities that uh, give change? And particularly in parking facilities close to the border, are there any plans to introduce machines that will accept Euro? Gorm I'm grateful to the, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, the, the, the issue of, of change uh, um, uh, uh, payments uh, have been made um, uh, would, uh, I think, add further uh, cost to uh, the, co the overall cost of car parking um, services. Uh, and I would have to look very carefully uh, to see that we were uh, getting uh, uh, value for money. And hence the benefit, I think, of the Park Mobile system. Because with the Park Mobile system, uh, once you register uh, for the parking and uh, then, uh, uh, upon return, you uh, re-register. Then that charges you the exact amount, and so it's another encouragement for people uh, to use uh, to use that. On the issue of, of, of the use of, of euro, I think it was uh, Mr. Byrne uh, had raised this uh, issue previously um, uh, uh, with me, 
uh, and I uh, happily update uh, the member uh, in writing uh, as to the, the current situation. I call Mr. Sean Lynch. I will go to plead last and call you. Kes Everhart, question eight, please. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, <clears throat> early work on the integrated uh, transport pilot project has focused on uh, identifying opportunities for rationalisation of school services and public ser uh, transport services provided by the Southern Education and Library Board uh, and TransLink to a joint campus in Dungannon. This work has resulted in integration on four routes, which from today onwards uh, will see pupils transferring from SELB services to utilise spare capacity on existing TransLink services. This initial exercise shows that there are clear opportunities uh, to do things better, and it also highlights the benefits of departments and transport providers working collaboratively in local areas. The next phase of the work to be carried forward, taken forward will involve examining opportunities for rationalisation uh, in the provision of special needs transport in the Dungannon area involving the Southern Education Library Board and the Southern Health and Social uh, Care Trust. The project team also plan to consider what opportunities exist to utilise community transport more effectively, possibly by involving them uh, more in meeting school transport requirements in rural locations and extending the collect and connect type services that they currently provide for mainstream uh, TransLink services. At this uh, stage, the pilot project is scheduled to last for about 12 months, during which, the time, uh, during which time the departments involved will also be taking forward the monitoring and evaluation arrangements. The evaluation will capture the potential for operational uh, efficiencies and customer service improvements as a result of service integration, uh, in, in the expectation that further improvements can be implemented over the period of the pilot early next year, the departments involved will also begin work on an economic appraisal to inform the implementation of such integration on a wider scale over the longer term. Thank you. John Lynch for supplementary. and I want to thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, could I ask the Minister, has the uh, health service totally uh, uh, assisted in the process of, that, uh, of the pilot scheme? Gourmet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I uh, thank the member for his, for his uh, uh, initial comments. Uh, and his uh, further uh, question seems to indicate some doubt on his, uh, in his mind or on his behalf. Uh, that they are not, uh, that the health authorities are not uh, cooperating. That is not uh, information that is available uh, to me uh, at this point in time. If the member has the concerns, I'd be happy uh, if he wished to share it with me. Ms. Anello. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. I understand the pilot scheme is mostly about public transport, but can I ask the Minister what role does he en envisage? Um, cycling can play in the integration uh, 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 scheme? Well, I, I'm uh, very pleased that the, the member has raised the issue of cycling, uh, and the member will know that I'm a very keen supporter and keen advocate. Uh, and I think um, uh, the time for cycling uh, is now upon us. Um, and, and hence, I have created, uh, I'm in the process of creating a cycling unit uh, in, uh, within the department that can coordinate uh, all aspects of policy and uh, the outworking of that policy uh, in respect of uh, transport arrangements. And uh, I'm very pleased um, that uh, there's been a lot of positive feedback on that. Uh, and I think there is widespread acceptance that uh, cycling for too long has been ignored and has been something of a Cinderella. Uh, not now. Uh, I think cycling is, uh, is going to be actively promoted. And I welcome the members' um, enthusiasm for that. Well, Mr. Sean Rogers. Mr. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, officials from my department and TransLink are committed to assessing and developing the key roads and transport aspects of the South East Coast Master Plan, which was published by the Department for Social Development in February 2013. They will engage with all stakeholders, including the appointed consultants, to ascertain which aspects of the plan my department can assist with. Uh, I am aware that meetings have already taken place. My department will continue to take note of feedback from the consultation process and will continue 
uh, to be available to discuss the key opportunities and issues highlighted within the area of transportation. Thank you, Mr. President, Deputy Speaker. In, in, in terms of that, Mr. Minister, what's, what are the initial steps that your department are taking to ensure that the road infrastructure is improved as part of the South East Coast Master Plan? I'm well, grateful to the, to the member for his supplementary question. And of course, um, on, on an ongoing basis, we, we seek to improve the, the overall uh, road network, both the strategic road network and the local uh, road ne uh, network in all areas. Uh, but I think it, it is useful that um, where there are opportunities uh, to share with um, other, other departments and be aware of their initiatives, that we can um, tie into that and either offer advice or indeed um, in, in indicate how uh, we would um, seek to proceed in terms of road improvement. So I think it is uh, ongoing work, but uh, I'm certainly um, keen to see that uh, both in the roads that we maintain and any roads that we would propose to build, that there is a coordinated uh, and sensible and logical approach taken to that, uh, and that includes, of course, uh, areas and roads uh, in, in his constituency and all through Northern Ireland. Thank you. And time is up. And that concludes question time.